You can I want to go back, before I tell you what happened on New Year's Eve, I want to go back now and, and share some of the stories that we had when, as, when I was shearing in, in the Queenstown district. I shored a, a, a sheep station called Mount Oran, which is past Coronet Peak, right through the gorge. And um, had some hard case shearers uh, I shore with. Uh, Snow Quinn, he was a very good shearer, and he could shear those merinos too. Murray McSkimming, boy, could he shear those merinos. Jeez, he, he was good. Uh, Bluey Love, he's a bit of a hard case, a mate of mine. Um, he, he was the slowest of us, and he was down the end stand. And um, an American come in, the buses used to come up, an American come in and, and said to Bluey, you seem to be slower than the other boys. Yes, he says, it's my turn to do the tough ones today. Yeah, has mixed day, what a hard case. He was, the, he was the presser. He used to charge them to come in the door. Got told off in the finish. The bus driver wouldn't let him, wouldn't let him charge him. Don Harland, he was, a, he was a, uh, an Aussie guy. And he, uh, he was sitting there one day having his smoko uh, with his bags, bag moccasins on. Because we used to have bag, we used to make our, our moccasins out of bags. And uh, this American come in and said, oh, look at the wee booties. I bet they keep your tootsies warm. Well, Don looked at the guy and said, better than yours. And because he had the high, uh, shiny shoes on, eh? But anyway, New Year's Eve. What happened on New Year's Eve? So on New Year's Eve, I went to the bottom pub. That's where we all went. We all always met at the bottom pub. And I spotted this blonde chick. Short blonde chick, and I thought, oh, she's nice. I wonder where she comes from. Anyway, I said to Murray, Murray me skimming, I said, who's that blonde chick over there, Murray? He said, oh, that's my sister, Margaret. Oh, oh I see. So I went over and spoke to Margaret and made myself known, and I took notice that she had some rings on her fingers, you see. So I said, oh, I see you've got some rings on your fingers. You're married. She said, no, I'm divorced. Ah, oh, okay. Well, what's with the rings? She says, I'm engaged to be married. Oh. Well, that's a challenge, I thought. Anyway, we got talking and I took her home. I took her home the long way, uh, around the town clock, you know, up on the hill. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I got her home pretty late in the morning. Oh, yes. And her father, did he growl? Ooh, did he give her a dressing gown? I took off. I didn't wait around. Yeah. So anyway, that was right. I kept picking her up and taking her out because I, I quite enjoyed her company, you know. And um, one day we're sitting in, uh, in the car under the um, blue gum tree in, in Alexandra and she said to me, I've got some news for you. I said, oh yeah, what's that? She says, the doctor, I went to the doctor yesterday and I'm pregnant. What? You're pregnant? Holy Moses! How did that happen? Anyway, I said, well, if that's the case, then I'm out of here. I'm back up to North Island. I, I, I don't want to hang around to this lot. So anyway, she didn't want me to go. And the next day we went up to Cromwell and pushed the boys. In the, she had two boys, Gus and Michael. Gary, he was called then, and Michael, and um, daddy little fellas, and uh, I would push them on the uh, swings and stuff like that, you know, and I took her home, and I said, right, I'm not going to see you again, because I'm away up to North Island, I'm going home next week, and I said my goodbyes, and I got in the car, and I'm sitting in the car, and these two little fellas come out of the house, up, running up to my car, and they said, Mum doesn't want you to go. She's crying. She wants you to come back. Ah, <laughs> Jesus. What do you do? This woman told me she's pregnant. And she's got two little boys. No father. They've got no father. What do I do? Do I just take off? Well, what did I do? I went back. Went back inside. And I gave her a cuddle. And I said, Okay. I'm not a coward. We'll get married. 
We'll get married on Saturday, the 29th of February, 1964. It's leap year. So we got married on the Saturday, the 29th of February, 1964. And I went up to Mount Nicholas shearing sheep. And while I was up there, so these guys <coughs> had me on. Uh, they said to me, have you seen, Ron, have you seen the three-man lift? And I said, no, I haven't seen the three-man lift. How does that work? He said, you lie on the floor and we'll show you. So I lay on the floor. One fellow held my legs down. Another fellow held my shoulders down. And the other fellow went away and got a bottle of beer, undo my fly, and poured the bloody bottle of beer into me fly. Wow. Right. I, I pulled and I, and, and I couldn't get away. And I bucketed me back. Oh, I put it, put it right out. They had to carry me out of buddy uh, out out um, to Queenstown, and, and 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 I went to Clyde Hospital, and I had a sore back, really bad. Anyway, Margaret, we were married by then, uh, and Margaret come uh, used to come and see me, and I'd say, "When's the baby due?" She said, "Oh, it'll come when it's ready." Come when it's ready. Well, I got a ring from the doctor. And the doctor said, your wife's had a baby. It's a girl. Its name, and I said, well, right. Uh, how long is that? Oh, 11 months. Oh, so she wasn't pregnant at all. You mean to say, I've got a baby, I've got two little boys, a wife, and I didn't have to get married? Well. I went to Dunedin to get me back fixed with a chiropractor. And we bought a house. Because I said to myself, like, this is what I said to myself. Ron, you put yourself in this bloody mess. You get yourself out. I made a promise to myself that I would never, ever leave my wife. Regardless of what happened, I'd take everything in its stride. Because there's so many marriages break up. I've got into this mess and I'll, I'll take it. So anyway, we bought a house in Kenmar Street in Alexandra. And we had some good times in that house. Absolutely great. I remember parties. We had parties there when the shearing was on. Um, I, uh, I sure in the um, final shearing. I got fourth one year in the final shearing. Um, yeah, we had some great days in Alexandra. There's lots of things I could tell you about. I must tell you this one, though. There was a story. We used to go fencing. Bluey Love and I went fencing in the, in, in the, on the holidays. We went up to this bloody mountain, uh, putting fences, building a fence. And it snowed. We had, a, we had a Land Rover, Murray's Land Rover, and a tent. And we, it snowed. And, and we couldn't get out. We couldn't walk out. We couldn't take the... We had to stay in the, on the mountain. And, and, the, and the snow kept uh, putting, going onto the tent and, and crashing it down. And we were lying in bed with a... We had, a, had to heat up a, a, a brick uh, to keep us warm. Um, and, and I thought I was going to die. I, I really did. But that was a, that was a great experience. We played rugby, Bluey and I, and, and and they dropped us from the A team. We played the Alexander A, and they dropped us because we we couldn't go home for the weekend because we didn't go home uh, to to training because we didn't train. They dropped us. Look, I've got lots of things here I could tell you, lots of things, but I'm going to close now because it's Friday night, and Friday night I go down and have a few beers with my what my daughter, Kerry. She's the oldest one that came. Um, the one that took 11 months to come. We're, we're great mates. And uh, I'll be down there with, with my son, Michael. He's another great mate too. So Friday night's nibble night. I'll catch you later. Righto? See ya.